Greetings, friends, and happy Super Bowl Eve. Welcome back to Mike Allen from Chicagoland. Currently broadcasting from Wrigleyville in the city of Chicago. Now, this is going to be a very football-heavy video, but uh, in order to talk about the topic that uh, I'm going to be discussing today, it has to start here in uh, Wrigleyville in front of the iconic Wrigley Field marquee. So let me uh, take the time to explain. Please come and join me and let's get started. a bit of uh, news lately made here in the Chicagoland area surrounding our football team, the Chicago Bears. There's talk that a uh, new stadium could be coming in in nearby Arlington Heights. And with that news, I just kind of wanted to explore the history of kind of where the Chicago Bears have played, um, the reasons for moving from one place to another, and kind of where they're going to go next. So like I said, we're going to start off here at Wrigley Field because this was the home of the Chicago Bears between 1921 and 1970. So let me give you a little bit of a history lesson behind that. So right here on the corner of Clark and Addison is the south main entrance to Wrigley Field. And if this were 1921 and you were to walk through these doors here and up through one of the staircases inside towards the field level, you would see the south end zone, the Chicago Bears played in a north-south end zone. Nowadays, they wouldn't be able to fit a north-south end zone because there's been quite a bit of stadium renovations. In fact, recently, Northwestern and Illinois played a game here in Wrigley Field. I think it was around 2015. And as I mentioned before, because of all the stadium renovations, they weren't able to do a north-south end zone like the Bears did. It had to go east and west. And in fact, the uh, east end zone was not... Uh, deemed to be safe because of its proximity to the right field uh, bleacher wall. The newly added Gallagher Way. Profiled this in one of my Cubs videos recently. Heading over to the north end of Wrigley Field, which is over by Waveland Avenue. Towards the outfield. Standing on Waveland Avenue now and looking at the north side of Wrigley Field. On the other side of this wall here are the bleacher section and back during the Bears playing days the north end zone would have been on the other side of this gate and this uh, fence and wall here. Now back in the day it was not uncommon for NFL teams to play in baseball stadiums like this. In fact the NFL had uh, two Chicago teams, the Bears and then the Chicago Cardinals, who are now the Arizona Cardinals, and they used to play on the south side in uh, Comiskey Park, and then obviously the Bears played here in Wrigley Field. But then when the NFL and the AFL merged in 1970, a requirement was made that every NFL stadium had to seat at least 50,000 people, and Wrigley Field just wasn't going to cut it in that regard, so a new home was needed. And in order to see that new home, we're going to have to hop on Lakeshore Drive and head downtown. Opened in 1924 as Municipal Grant Park Stadium, it was renamed Soldier Field in 1925 to honor the fallen soldiers of World War I. A lot of games were played here, such as Army versus Navy, uh, Notre Dame, other high school and college football games, and the Bears and Cardinals even played a few charity games here at Soldier Field. But as I mentioned before, this didn't become the Bears' home until 1971, and it's remained their home up until today. Statue of... Chicago Bears founder George S. Hallis here in front of the south entrance to Soldier Field. Now, Papa Bear actually only wanted Soldier Field to be a temporary solution. The Bears wanted to build their own stadium. Soldier Field is not owned by the Chicago Bears. It's owned by the Chicago Park District. And Papa Bear Hallis 
and the Chicago Bears wanted to get something a little more permanent and one that they could control. But as the years went on and no new deals happened, the Bears signed a 20-year lease in 1978 with the city of Chicago to play their games here at Soldier Field. A Soldier Field's peak seating capacity was around 100,000 at one point in time. Over the years, that shrunk as renovations were made to the facility to bring it up to Chicago Bears and NFL standards. New stadium suites were added, new seats. That took it down to about 67,000 by the time the new renovations started after the 2001 season. Statue of former Bears running back and Hall of Famer Walter Payton who once held the NFL's all-time career rushing record till Emmett Smith of the Cowboys broke it. So over the years, it's not like the Bears didn't have opportunities and didn't explore ways to leave Soldier Field. I remember as a kid, former Bears chairman and Papa Bear Hallis' grandson, Michael McCaskey, he looked at uh, having a dome stadium built here within Chicago's city limits. Back Back in the early 70s when the Bears were making their way to Soldier Field from Wrigley Field. They had explored um, building a new stadium out in Arlington Heights, and that's actually going to come into play later in this video. I'll explain that when we get to that point. Uh, there was also talk about building a new stadium and entertainment district in northwest Indiana, but the government powers that be said no to that. But finally, after years of negotiations between the Chicago Bears and the city of Chicago, they were finally able to come to an agreement on a Soldier Field renovation following the 2001 season. So following the Bears' playoff loss to the Philadelphia Eagles in January of 2002, renovation on Soldier Field began. In fact, I want to say that the seats were already starting to be pulled out of Soldier Field and stadium taken apart immediately after the game ended. Here's the famous Soldier Field columns which have been a part of this building since it opened in 1924. In fact, Soldier Field was given federal national landmark status in 1987. However, in 2006, it lost that status, mainly due to the renovations that took place between 2001 and 2003. So looking at Soldier Field from this angle, it's been described as a spaceship landing in the middle of Soldier Field. It's been called things like the mistake on the lake, the eyesore on the lakeshore, and I think ever since the Bears renovated this place and moved back in in the 2003 season, they've been looking to get out. Quite honestly, who could blame them? Now, aside from the Bears not owning their own stadium, which causes issues in and of itself, this is also not in the best location for fans. Very limited parking, long walks to the public transits, public uh, bus stops, and a lot of winding and wavy pathways and things like that to get over to those public stops. So not the most convenient place in the world. I actually saw a Elton John concert here back in August. It took forever to get to the stadium from when we parked. And also, I remember sitting inside the stadium right before Sir Elton was about to begin singing and performing to the crowd. And I look down and I see the field. It's covered in a tarp. But I'm thinking to myself, yeah, that can't be good for the uh, for the field. And sure enough, when the Bears played their next game, it was a preseason game, the field was in absolutely atrocious atrocious shape. The field conditions have always been an issue at Soldier Field, but I really don't want to rehash that because it's just going to make me even more angry. Now, from a optic standpoint, it is in a great location. You got downtown skyline. Right behind those trees is the Field Museum shed aquarium right through those trees there and then the adler planetarium is down that way so it's in a great spot i mean this is the area where the 1933 world's fair was held and today there's a lot of tourism that comes through this section of the town and so i think soldier field's got that going for them but from an nfl game day experience Leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, so even though the Bears have another 10 years on their lease with the city of Chicago to play at Soldier Field, there may be a solution. But in order to go check out that solution, we have to get out of the city and head into the suburbs.
One thing I forgot to add is that Mayor Lori Lightfoot has proposed several new renovations to Soldier Field, but it doesn't seem like the Bears are interested. They clearly don't want to play here anymore. As I said before, I don't really blame them. I think they need to own their own stadium, and they also need to basically cut ties and start anew. I think that's the best way forward in becoming a more modern, big boy NFL franchise. And we're going to head in the car, head out to Arlington Heights, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Before heading out, I just wanted to get one more look at the columns. Sight of beauty. So currently in the northwest suburb of Arlington Heights now, and I'm going to get out of my car and do a little bit of exploring of a plot of land that the Bears have reached a purchasing agreement. Uh, they haven't officially bought this plot of land yet, but they are working with the current owners to make that happen. But before I get out and do some exploring, I just wanted to make mention of the fact that Soldier Field has the lowest seating capacity in the NFL. 61,500. I meant to mention this while we were still in the city and completely slipped my mind. But yet that is another reason why the Bears are exploring other options outside of Soldier Field because when you have the lowest stadium seating in the NFL, you don't get a really much of an opportunity to maximize your revenue. So another reason why I can understand why the Bears want to seek other options outside of the city of Chicago. <laughs> So the train that just went by was the Metra line that stops right by the old Arlington racetrack. It runs along Route 14 Northwest Highway. So McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts across the street. And this is not here on the train station side, but on the other side of that fence sits 326 acres property that the Bears are looking to purchase and develop for a new stadium slash kind of like a mixed-use uh, district of restaurants and things of that nature. So let's do some exploring. So this is the old Arlington Park racetrack. It's a horse racing facility that recently closed within the last couple of years. And now it sits completely empty and no longer being used. In fact, because I never really had an interest in horse racing, I never had a reason to come visit this place. This is the first time I've ever actually been this close to the Arlington Race Park facility. So in looking at the plans that the Bears have put together from a preliminary standpoint where the racetrack is sitting, this would be kind of like a mixed-use district where there'd be like bars and restaurants and places for the fans to to come to not all that dissimilar to what Wrigley Field is added around you know their their facility be something similar but quite a lot bigger because there's more land to play with around here now everything I'm saying here with regards to the Bears and a new stadium in Arlington Heights I say it all with a grain of salt because there's a lot of hurdles that need to be cleared they need to figure out taxes and who's going to pay for what uh, is it going to be this city of Arlington Heights is it going to be the Bears uh, they need a lot of infrastructure in here yes there's a train station but it's going to have to probably get a lot bigger with a lot more uh, amenities um, you know, the roadways are going to need some work I drove on uh, Route 53 coming up here that uh, that's probably going to need to be extended and um, be able to handle a lot more traffic on uh, on Bears game days than what it can currently handle now so just know saying all this with a grain of salt However, I did want to come out here and check this place out as I do think that uh, it is a potential, you know, new property for the Bears. I also should add that a lot of Arlington Heights residents aren't too happy about this proposal of the Bears coming into their town with a new stadium and new uh, 
mixed use district. There's uh, obviously mentioned earlier the question about taxes, but this is going to require more money for fire and police, which is going to raise taxes for the residents. I've also heard that a lot of people within uh, downtown Arlington Heights who own small businesses there are worried about their businesses being um, suffering because you know people will be coming over here instead of over there. So those are just some of the few concerns that uh, folks are grappling with and several of many more hurdles that need to be cleared if the Bears are ever going to come and build a stadium here. So those buildings over there, this parking lot, field straight ahead, and then Arlington Park right here. This is all property that the Bears would own if this deal ever went through. I mentioned earlier that Arlington Park itself sits where the mixed-use district would be based on the current plans, and then the stadium would be up in that direction. So the Bears just hired a gentleman by the name of Kevin Warren, who served as the commissioner of the Big Ten the last few years now, and he does have NFL experience. He was the COO of the Minnesota Vikings and was instrumental in building their new stadium in downtown Minneapolis. So he brings a wealth of experience with him, and he mentioned something in his, I think it was in his press conference or one of the post-press conference uh, interviews he did where he actually came out here to take a look at this land himself because he's kind of a stadium nerd. Well, I'm a Bears nerd, so that's why I'm doing this. It's fun imagining what all of this land here could be someday. This is still private property, so I'm certainly not going to go roaming around these buildings or across these fences, but these look to be old horse stables where they would horses before the race and based upon the drawings the renderings be on the other side of these buildings that the new bear stadium would sit here's a much better view of where the stadium would sit if i'm looking at the drawings and getting my bearings correctly off in the distance you see those buildings those are more stables for the horses so open land so this is either going to be the stadium or the parking lot on the other side of this these trees here is also a more open land that arlington park currently owns one thing i do want to point out is is route 53 is right here so there is a highway close to the proposed stadium and then folks could exit here on about 14 on the other side of the train tracks but i'm thinking that this area is going to need a lot more in the way of infrastructure so they can entertain the bears coming out here and here's an even better view parking lot would sit over where those buildings are and the stadium would be roughly right about here walking back to my car now to go explore the south end of this property but while i'm walking i'm just kind of thinking and envisioning something like this coming to fruition now i don't live in arlington heights and i do have sympathy for the people that live here and how it's going to impact them both in a positive and negative way I'm sure if I lived in this town, I don't think I would be as positive with regards to wanting the Bears to come and build a new stadium over here on this plot of land. But just speaking from a fan standpoint, I think it'd be a very positive step forward for the franchise. It would be a dome stadium so they could host other events like the Final Four, major college bowl games, and even the Super Bowl. Also give the Bears an opportunity to control the stadium you know they don't have to work with the Chicago Park District it's something that they'll own so no more turf issues or things like that 
there's a whole host of uh, other reasons I could get into that aren't just popping into my head right now, but uh, kind of get the idea of how I feel about it and why I think this would be a good move for the franchise. And I mentioned Kevin Warren earlier, and he was asked during his introductory press conference when he was named president and CEO of the Bears, are the Bears focusing on any other options right now? And he said no. He said Arlington Heights and this property here is their sole focus. So right up here at the stoplight is the corner of Wilkie and Euclid Avenue. This is the southeast side of the property. There's the park right over here. And I can see how this is going to impact a lot of the residential houses over in this section of the area here next to the property. So here's the south end of the Arlington property right next to Euclid Avenue. This is the track side, which I believe was a restaurant. These buildings over here are not part of the Arlington property, but up over here, I believe, will give us a vantage point of the stadium, where the stadium is going to be, if this plan comes to fruition. All right, so it says licensed personnel only. This place is no longer in business, obviously, so I'm not gonna go any further, but this property here, this along, right along 53, you can see the cars going by. This is slated to be the parking lot to the Bears' new facility, to the Bears' new stadium, where these buildings are. Look up ahead, that's where the more stables the horses used to sit. Not sure if this is Arlington property or not behind that fence, but yeah, looking at what could be the parking lot someday. So I just drove a little bit south of where I just was, just to point out that all of this would still stay, this industrial park here, some restaurants and apartments, condos up ahead over here. This was not Arlington property and this would all remain. However, it would sit next door to a Bears new stadium and any um, restaurants and bars put in. Well, this would be their neighbors. So before I close out today's video, which has been very football heavy, I just want to talk about tomorrow's big game. Make my Super Bowl pick that I'm sure nobody cares about, but I'm still going to say it anyway. I'm going with the Philadelphia Eagles. I think that the Eagles defense is a great equalizer when Patrick Mahomes is on the field. Uh, Mahomes, the Kansas City quarterback, he's no doubt a, a great player and one of the great ones, but I just think the Eagles have a more balanced team, both on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Uh, in addition to that, I'm really rooting for Eagles coach Nick Sirianni. Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned this on my channel before, but for the first 19 years of my career, I worked uh, in college athletics as an administrator. 17 of those were at the Division III level, and Sirianni is a former Division III student athlete, won three national championships at uh, Mount Union, started his coaching career there, and worked his way up to becoming the Philadelphia Eagles head coach. So really uh, pulling for him. I like to see former Division III athletes be successful, so that's why I'm going with the Eagles. Anyways, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. There's other ways you can help me out in growing the channel. I'll put links down in the description below. And I should add, I've added a couple more Patreons. Really, really appreciate the support. So thank you very much. Anyways, this is Mike Allen from Chicagoland, signing off from Arlington Heights, Illinois. I'll be back next week with another video. But until then, don't you go changing.